My name is Faith Windsor and I was diagnosed with stage four bowel cancer in April 2020. I was 48 years old. My story started quite a while before I was diagnosed. I had got sober in 2018 and I'd felt really good for about six to eight months and um, I was very busy. I'm a single mum. Um, I ran quite a well, very busy cleaning business at the time and I was exhausted and I've always been quite stressed <laughs> and tired but this was a different kind of tired and I knew that I, I knew there was something wrong with me and I went to the doctors a couple of times in 2019 and they did some routine blood tests and things and nothing came back I honestly thought it was the menopause I thought it was perimenopausal and just sort of put it down to that and stress really However, by mid-2019, I was really unwell. I would come home in the afternoon and I would nap for four hours, four to five hours, and the exhaustion was just not right. And I knew something was wrong, so I again went to the doctor in um, September 2019 and unfortunately didn't have a great experience. He did in fact just laugh at me <laughs> um, and really didn't help me in any way, shape or form, wasn't listening, he didn't take any notice of me, but I knew there was something wrong. So I went straight from there and I booked another appointment with a different doctor who I knew was great and I thought I'd wait a few weeks for her to specifically speak to her about it, which I did in November, I think, of 2019. Um, and she was a bit better. She did some tests and ran some tests, but really there was no follow-up, no nothing. And because nothing really showed on the blood tests, nothing else was done. I just continued to get much, much worse over the Christmas, really just exhausted. And what is now to me a little miracle is literally five days before the first lockdown in the end of March 2020, I went to the doctor's surgery because what I now know is called tenesmus, which is a feeling of needing to go for a poo but not being able to and just like a pressure pushing down in my bum basically um, you get used to talking about bums and poos um, but yeah a real pressure in my bum and it's not something I would have ordinarily gone to the doctor about and I was really lucky that day that I saw an advanced practitioner nurse who saved my life that day without a doubt and she um, with everything else that I told her she took me really seriously and sent me for an urgent referral to the hospital that day and obviously the big first lockdown happened five or six days later and I know for a fact that through lockdown I wouldn't have gone back to the doctor so had she not taken me seriously that day I would probably be dying now so I'm hugely grateful to how I love nurses and so straight after that, two weeks, with less than two weeks actually, I got in and had um, an appointment with a specialist who then <clears throat> had a little look around and sent me for biopsy, which I had the following week. And I was diagnosed three weeks to the day with stage, well, at that point, bowel cancer, which went on to be stage four once the more investigations and things were done. It had metastasized to my lung. And at one point we thought it had metastasized to my liver but actually, thank goodness, that wasn't the case. And it was just my lung and my bowel. So my first initial treatment was um, radiotherapy. Again, because of COVID, I had a different type of treatment. I think ordinarily in my position, I'd have had five weeks of chemo radiotherapy. I did in fact have one week of intense radiotherapy to shrink the tumor even by a millimeter is what it needed, I was told, just so that it could be operated on. Thankfully, that worked. Once I'd had time to recover from the radiotherapy, which was a lot trickier than I was expecting it to be, I had an open elape surgery in August 2020, which I'd had quite a lot of time to prepare for, thankfully, because of the recovering from the radiotherapy. And I was told pretty much straight off that I would be having a permanent colostomy which, oh, I get goosebumps, was the scariest thing in a lot of ways. So didn't want it. It took a lot of time to come to terms with that um, for me personally. However, anybody going through the same, I'll tell you once you've got it, it really isn't that bad. <laughs> Obviously, the, the surgery itself is quite intensive. It was open surgery and I had a permanent colostomy and what they call a Barbie butt. So I'm completely sewn up so it can never be reversed. 
Um, but to be honest, once I came round from the surgery, the bag really wasn't a problem for me. It is what it is. It saved my life, as did the surgeon. I got to terms with it really easily and got to got my grips with it really easily. It was either have one or die, so I was more than happy to do that <laughs> in the end. But like, I'm not making light of it at all because for me, it was a really tricky thing to come to terms with. Obviously, that surgery took a quite a long time to recover from, um, along with the radiotherapy, because the radio had given me some kind of mobility problems as it was. So so I had the surgery in August and then I needed to have surgery again on my lung to get the um, lump from my lung. Unfortunately, for, after the operation, I had an infection, which um, was a real tricky one to get rid of. So because of the complications of the first surgery, I couldn't yet have chemo. Um, so I had to have my lung surgery next, which I had in November 2020. That was a keyhole surgery at Guy's in London and they removed a tumour from my right lung. So it was pretty back to back to back. I was very lucky the treatment just went boom, boom, boom. Um, once I'd recovered from that surgery, I had chemotherapy in early 21, so last year. And actually, um, today is the anniversary of one year being told I was cancer free, which is amazing um, when you think about it. It's incredible. And one of the reasons I'm doing this video is to give people like me two years ago a bit of hope because that's so important, so important. And the first thing you think, when, especially when you hear stage four, is the worst and it's not always the case it really isn't so i'm really glad <laughs> to be here and that was quite a lot of surgeries and treatment all in combined into a year so obviously it's taken me quite a long time to recover from that i had to have another operation in september 2021 which has taken seven months of going back forth, back forth to sort of fix. I'm nearly recovered from that, but I do have massive ongoing problems from the cancer. My life is nothing like it was before, but that might not be a bad thing. I've learned to really relax. I've learned to really live in the moment. I've learned that um, whatever life throws at you, you can deal with it, no matter how hard it is. It might not feel like that at the time, but you will get through it. You'll manage um, whatever way you can. Some of the tools that I really used were meditation a lot and just obviously connection with people and humor and taking things so slowly. My biggest thing in life is trying to project forward and see what might happen. And in this kind of situation, you can't do that because there's so many curveballs thrown at, at, at times that you can't plan. You just do what the doctors say <laughs> and live for the day. And some days are much tougher than others. Um, and in those days, you go minute by minute, second by second if necessary, and that's what I did. I've had three clear scans now. I'm being scanned every four months for the next couple of years. Um, my next scan's in July. Obviously, stage four, there's a high risk of recurrence, and obviously I worry about that, and obviously that's a massive thought in the back of your head still but it is what it is. That's a tomorrow problem if it happens because it's not happened yet. And I'm so thankful and grateful. And I guess any advice that I would give to anybody going through anything similar is to seek out other people who are going through the same. There's a massive cancer community online who you don't have to necessarily be friends with them, but follow them and get any, that sense of identification is really amazing and knowing that you're not alone. And I've got a quite a few lovely friends that I've met through the cancer community. So I, my advice is really use that because that connection and that sense of identification is really important. And also laughter. We, I mean, my daughter used to um, make incredibly inappropriate jokes about cancer and we used to find it hilarious. And that's just how we got through it. My kids were absolutely incredible. I'm so lucky to have them. My friends and my family are incredible. So lucky to have them. So lean on whoever you need to lean on. And whoever's listening to this, I wish the best of luck in your journey.